A couple of weeks ago, I got a message from seven artisans asking me if I would look at their 35mm f1.2 lens. I told all seven of them that I would be happy to look at the lens. So they sent me one, and I'm going to tell you what I found. This is Alan Wall's photography. I'm Alan. Welcome back. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters and the people that support me through the website. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you very much. A quick word about my reviews. As you know, I don't accept any reimbursement for doing these reviews. And what you get from me is what I believe about the lens. Today, we're gonna to be looking at a lens from Seven Artisans. It is a very fast, very small manual lens is the 35 millimeter f 1.2 if you are a macro photographer i urge you to stick around till the end of the video because i have something special about this lens to share with you but first let's talk about it as a mirrorless camera lens it is a solid chunk of metal and glass it has uh, six elements in five groups and it's an all metal body. It's completely manual. It has an aperture ring at the base of the lens right next to the flange on the camera, uh, which makes it a bit tricky to get to, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The aperture ring has been de-clicked. So there is no tactile feedback to let you have a guess at what aperture you're at. It's a continuous turn. It turns about 70 or 80 degrees and it covers uh, f 1.2 all the way up to f 16. The focus ring also has a deeply scalloped ring around it, which makes it really easy to operate with the tip of one finger, which came in pretty handy. I said the lens is small, it's tiny. I've never used a lens this small that wasn't an enlarger lens or a microscope objective. And it's heavy. Uh, it actually only weighs 150 grams, but it feels like it weighs half a pound in your hand because of the small size. The one I have is for the Fuji X mount, but I understand that they make this lens in a variety of, uh, of different mounts for pretty much all the, the major mirrorless brands. The lens has a 43 millimeter filter thread, but it does not have a lens hood, which becomes a bit of an issue if you're using this outdoors on a bright day, but I'll talk about that in a second. Whenever I uh, review a new lens or look at a new lens, I always compare it to all of the other lenses I've ever used. So I have some kind of a frame of reference, kind of like Liz Taylor used to do with every new man she met. But in this case, I really don't have anything to compare this to. I guess the closest thing I have to this is a Nikon 50 millimeter f 1.8 D. It's one of my favorite lenses and it really isn't a very good comparison. They're both prime lenses and they both have equivalent focal lengths. Uh, this thing feels very much like using a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera as far as the field of view goes. Other than that, there's not much to compare between the two. The fit and finish of this lens is spectacular. I love the, the buttery smooth feel of the focus ring. Same with the uh, aperture ring, though the aperture ring is just a little bit looser than I might like. So what I did to test it was take it out and shoot a whole card full of images in every condition that I could find from bright sun to dark interiors. I didn't have any way to keep track of my EXIF data. I didn't know what my aperture was for, for any of the shots. So I tried to take some notes as I went so that I could know when I was looking at the photographs what aperture I was shooting at. But I forgot to do that a lot of the time because this is such a dynamic lens to use. After a while, I stopped even thinking about what aperture I was shooting at, all I knew was I was shooting at the right aperture for that shot. And that's what this, this lens gives you. And it's one of the reasons I really enjoyed having my hands on this, to be able to take very much um, natural photographs the way I wanted them to look without ever once thinking about any of the settings. 
After spending a couple of hours taking photographs, I came back home and I went through all of them, one at a time, and looked at them very critically. For the photographs that I had uh, aperture data on, the ones I'd taken notes on, uh, I was able to, to break down the performance of the lens at a variety of different apertures. After looking at all of the photographs and then doing a little bit of lab testing on the bench just to confirm that what I thought I was seeing, I was actually seeing by photographing some lens cards and other things, uh, I, I came up with an idea of what this lens's strengths and weaknesses are. First of all, to use the lens out and about, it's, it's a real pleasure. I, uh, I had a little bit of trouble early on with my finger getting in the way when I was changing focus, because I'm used to changing focus on a large lens uh, where my hand's nowhere near the end of it. But in this case, I would have little pink nubbins of fingertip showing up uh, in a bunch of the photographs early on until I got used to using a single finger to change focus. I really enjoyed the dynamic, active business of taking photographs with this. Uh, your hand never leaves the lens, or my hand never left the lens. After a while, I found myself changing the aperture with my index finger while focusing with my long finger. And I, I was just doing this all afternoon without really even thinking about it. So the experience of using it was very pleasurable. As far as image quality goes, the only image quality issues that I picked up on immediately out in the field were that uh, wide open, there was some pretty obvious vignetting that, that went away quite quickly up a, around uh, uh, f2.8, it was hardly noticeable and f4, it was gone. I knew that there was some softness in my images, but I didn't see a pattern until I got home and looked at the pictures. But at f1.2, the center of the image is okay sharp, but the edges are not sharp at all. Uh, I think this is a result of field curvature, as you would expect. Uh, and it persisted up to about f2, but above that, the sharpness started to get pretty even uh, across the image. At f4, you'd really have to, I think, look for it to notice it. At f2, the center of the image got a lot sharper as well, and that it persisted all the way up to just about f16. At f16, there was a little global softening that looked like it was uh, you know, from diffraction. As you'd probably expect with a lens as fast as this, most of the problems were most obvious at f1.2. And there was quite a bit of aberration going on. There was quite a lot of purple fringing, lateral chromatic aberrations, especially in the high contrast areas. I would say that what chromatic aberration I still had in my images was really easy to fix in Lightroom. This lens displayed quite a lot of barrel distortion. This turned out to be really easy to fix in Lightroom. I like the look of the bokeh from this lens when it's wide open, but I prefer it uh, under lower light conditions. Towards the end of the day, I noticed that the bokeh was softening up and looking really quite pretty especially when I would put some uh, distant lights in the frame. They look really good wide open. During the bright parts of the day, the, the bokeh looked a little chopped up. Uh, it's hard to describe. It just wasn't r super smooth, but it wasn't a deal breaker either. So all in all, while the image quality was a bit dodgy at uh, f1.2, it wasn't that terribly bad. And when I balanced it against the sheer fun of using the lens, it became really not that big of an issue for me. This is not what I would expect to find from a $2,500 fast prime, but it's not a $2,500 fast prime. So why should I expect that? So wide open, this lens has a few quirks but they're by and large easy to fix. 
they're not terribly noticeable unless you're looking for them. And in my opinion, it doesn't do anything to take away from the fun of using the lens. The things I don't like about the lens are it is really, really prone to bad flare. If you're shooting in a, uh, a situation with a lot of bright light, any light that hits the front element of this lens is going to give you the most shocking reddish pink flare uh, that is really off-putting. What I did with mine was I built a lens hood out of a, a little stack of step up and step down rings and just screwed it directly onto the filter thread and uh, it didn't cause any vignetting uh, and it did stop a lot of the flare. So there is a, there is a workaround to it. A couple of things I didn't think I'd like that ended up being non-issues was the short throw on the focus ring. I thought I would want more uh, throw to, to more accurately focus, but it's fine. Um, the other thing was the declicked aperture ring. But again, when I was trying to use the camera like a technical photographer would use it, it was a bit irritating not knowing what my aperture was. But after using it for about half an hour, I suddenly realized that that's not the point of this lens. The point is to use the aperture ring to get the photograph the way you want it. So as soon as I stopped thinking about what the aperture might be and just started using that adjustment to get the picture the way I wanted it, not only did it become a non-issue, but it actually became a big issue for how much I enjoyed using the lens. When people talk about a lens being fun, I think that's what they might be talking about because I never think of a lens as something that gives me fun. Uh, but this certainly did. I can't tell you how many times I found myself uh, taking a photograph and then grinning at how much I enjoyed the experience of feeling my way into that image. That's probably the biggest pro is that it is just so much fun to use and it gives me access to a kind of organic, natural way to take photographs that connects more with the artistic side of me than with the technical side. It's hard to put into words, but if you pick one up and try it, I think you'll, you'll see exactly what I mean. It's a different kind of photography for me. The other things that I like about it, it's really capable in low light, as you would expect with such a, a fast lens. I also love, love, love the metal lens cap. It's, it's really solid, and the, the feel and sound as it slips onto the lens is deeply satisfying. Try it, you'll see what I mean. Very nice, very vintage feel to it. Something else I really love about this lens is the awesome packaging. I suppose that isn't part of a lens review, but this is a solid enough box that you could actually keep the lens in this and it would be safe and protected. One thing that I give this lens extra points for is the brilliant uh, user manual that comes in the box with the lens. It's, uh, it's not very long and half of it is in uh, Chinese, which is problematic for me because uh, I only speak Chinese fluently. I don't write it. Hang on, no, I don't, I don't speak it either. Uh, but this has got lots of useful tips and pointers on how to use it. Things I wouldn't have thought of, frankly, uh, particularly the one about staring at the sun through this lens. You're not supposed to do that. Who would have thought? I haven't mentioned the price. It costs approximately $130. It's a little hard for me to tell you whether or not $130 is a fair price for this lens. All I can tell you is that after using it now for uh, the better part of a week, I would uh, not hesitate to spend $130 on this lens. More because uh, of the fact that it is just a great pleasure to use. Uh, and it may be the only lens I've ever bought for that purpose. Normally I'm buying a lens to do a particular job. In this case, I would buy this lens to give me a particular uh, feeling from my photography that uh, 
seems pretty priceless. Now, if I were just reviewing this lens like a normal lens review, uh, I would be finished now. And I would say that this is a, a pretty good solid recommend that uh, you think about getting this lens. And I would leave it at that. A few minutes ago, I told you to stick around till the end of the video. This is now the end of the video, and this is what I wanted to tell you. Unsurprisingly, when I was sitting at my desk looking at this lens, one of the first things that crossed my mind was, hmm, a nice short focal distance prime. What would that look like backwards on an extension tube or bellows? So I took some extension tubes, found the right adapter, and it's it's just a 43 millimeter uh, step up ring to 52 millimeters and then a 52 millimeter reversing ring. And uh, yeah, Bob's your uncle, slap it right on the end of your, your uh, uh, extension tubes. So I put about 100 millimeters of extension on this lens in reverse and started photographing tiny things on my desk. The first thing I photographed was a millimeter ruler. Uh, to make sure that I was right about the magnification, which was right at four to one. So four to one magnification, and I didn't have any lights. I used a flashlight and I just started taking pictures. So while these pictures are nothing to, to write home about, they did make me think that there was a chance that this lens could actually perform on a more formal setup. So I set up my macro studio. I, I put the lens in reverse on a set of bellows, which was real easy to adapt the lens to. Uh, I just put a 43 uh, to 52 millimeter step up ring in the filter threads of the lens and then used the reversing ring for my uh, Nikon F mount bellows. So I could attach the lens right to the end of my bellows. Uh, I don't have a Fuji adapter for my bellows, so I had to use a Nikon camera. I used a crop frame camera as well and was able to set up a, a formal setup at uh, 100 millimeters of extension. It was giving me um, a little under four times magnification with the bellows set up the way I had them. And uh, then I went looking for something to photograph and I found a bottle uh, of alcohol uh, with several very old insects, very tiny ones. To show you how tiny, this is uh, the last insect that I photographed, and it is uh, smaller than a grain of rice. The only modification that I made to the lens was I fashioned a lens hood out of uh, a single strip of Velcro, which I turned around and stuck on itself and I put it in this groove just to protect the end of the lens and to keep the flash from striking the, the surface of the lens. Now, I had been photographing the lens earlier on and I already had my studio lights set up in here. So I just decided to use my, my big studio strobes as the lighting for these images, which in retrospect was a mistake. I think I could have got uh, significantly better image quality if I've been using um, properly diffused speed lights. But I just want you to see some of these pictures that I ended up with. I'll be the first to admit that these uh, are not keepers by my standards, but they are certainly promising enough to make me think that with some proper lighting and better diffusion, and maybe a, a more stationary and stable platform, I just threw something together, uh, that this holds real promise because the stuff I didn't see uh, a lot of the aberrations that I was expecting to see with the lens in reverse weren't there. 
Obviously, I have a lot more testing to do with this lens to see if it is going to hold up the, the way I hope it will. But my preliminary tests are very encouraging. The way I see it, for your $130, you get three things with this 7 Artisans 35mm f1.2. You get a super fast, short focal length prime that is a joy to use. Second, you get a very decent macro optic that will get you up to four times magnification just by reversing on some extension tubes. And thirdly, you get the all-important reminder not to stare into the sun through a 35mm lens. It's the whole package. What more could you ask for? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions about the lens or about anything else. I'll be back in a few days with something else. Until then, stay well, be safe and take care.